Hello friends, I hope you are well. Welcome, it's Techman Pat here. Today we're gonna to be talking Starlink, uh, the what I would call a full review video. Uh, no more running around connecting things. These are my thoughts if this is worthwhile in Australia and for who? Because I think a big and important question that people have been asking is, well, if more people buy it, will it slow it down? Well, I'm gonna talk about that too. Now, big thanks to NetVault for sending me Starlink for review. This isn't actually their product, obviously, it's SpaceX's, but I just wanna thank them for being able to send this with their other package of a 4G failover system, and you can view that video below. So let's get started by rolling the intro. I don't think this needs to be a long video. There is some key points that make Starlink fantastic. There are also some points that you kind of have to consider before you purchase it. And there's a call out that I need to make to say don't purchase it if you have good internet. And it shouldn't make sense for you anyway. So let's talk about the price. In Australia, this costs about $500 to $800, depending what special SpaceX and Elon Musk decides to run at the time. That's just for the hardware. Then there is the $139 per month charge with unlimited data, up to one terabyte and after that they kind of punish you so that's something to note they say unlimited but it's technically up to one terabyte and after that they slow you down the speeds you can get is from zero megabits a second to about 200 megabits a second and that's awesome the uploads on the other hand range from about again zero or one let's say to about 35 megabits a second the ping you should expect is between 25 to 50. now the real world performance is out the window because it depends where you are how much satellite coverage you are getting where you place the dish how many people are in that sector at the same time and on my experience my speeds varied between 100 to 150 and on the upload it was about 5 to 15 megabits a second and that was in Perth Metro so it's something to consider when you're getting this it really depends on your area. Now at $139, those speeds are actually quite impressive. They're not necessarily fiber speeds, but they are better than a lot of NBN connections. But furthermore, they are better than any SkyMaster setup than you might have in a home that is out in a regional area. More or less, this is the best deal compared to SkyMaster to get fast internet. Obviously, the prices are significantly more, but you are getting a service that you can game on, stream on, and of course, enjoy it with your full household rather than just yourself. And if anybody else jumps on, it wrecks your internet. So what does that mean for a home in suburbia versus a home in a regional area? What I mean by regional is somewhere where you cannot get NBN and you have to choose between SkyMaster or potentially mobile internet, neither which will give you the performance that Starlink has. So at the end of the day, that is a better option if you're willing to spend the money to get fast internet. If you're in Metro and your NBN connection can go about 50 or 25 I know the speed is really exciting but the ping will frustrate you to no end however if you're getting lower than 20 and you cannot get any speed this becomes a very obvious solution if you're willing to fork out the $139 so in my mind somebody who has 50 megabits or more at home with an upload of at least 10 this probably isn't the best thing for you. When we start falling to numbers like 10 megabits up, that's when Starlink actually makes sense for a suburban home. Now there are still many, many homes, at least 700,000 that cannot get the 25 megabits a second down that NBN promised. So those homes could purchase this. Now the interesting thing is you might purchase this for a home like that and only use it temporarily when you can then get potentially a fiber upgrade where you only pay 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars and get incredible speeds that you would not have been able to get on copper. This is potentially a solution for people who have slow copper connections in Metro. 
On the other hand, the regional areas where you cannot get a copper connection, or if you do, and again, it's that same situation where it's really slow, this is a perfect internet solution to put in your home. The cost of 139 to get fast internet that you really need to live these days because of everything being on the internet and all your content, potentially work, and of course, entertainment, being on the internet and requiring fast internet means that this solution is great. So what are the downfalls? Well, Starlink disconnects quite often. In fact, multiple times every minute and it reconnects rather quickly. The biggest disconnections happen when you change from one satellite that's flying over to another. Now, I don't expect everybody to know everything about Starlink, but Starlink uses LEO satellites, low earth orbit satellites, which means they are flying quite close to the Earth and they're flying quite fast and there's a lot of them, thousands upon thousands, that gives you the ability to give coverage across the planet but also high speeds via these dishes. Now from my point of view, it really doesn't matter how this technology works as long as it works and performs really, really well and it certainly does. It's almost a guaranteed high speed internet connection for your home in an area that doesn't support it. Now the comments that people make that the more people buy it, the more congested it will be, Yes, that is true. However, SpaceX is continually sending more satellites into space. They've only just recently gone cash flow positive, which means the subscriptions are now paying for the business. And so they will be adding more and more satellites to make sure the basically the world is covered. Now the cool thing is these can move around so if a person moves home they can finally take that with them and of course it means that if you go traveling you can chuck this dish on the back of your RV. There is a specific RV version that allows you to pause the internet but of course it costs a little bit more per month. So while those disconnects happen and sometimes they happen for a lot longer some people have very bad experiences with internet and of course they complain and contact SpaceX and Starlink to get support and this happens with any solution so it's hard to say that this is bad the amount of happy people has outweighed the amount of issues and most of the time the issues are fixed or remedied by a replacement device a replacement modem or potentially moving the device to a more open area. The app and support that supports Starlink is fantastic. It lets you find a location that has no obstacles. So far I've scoured the internet to find issues with Starlink and I found not many. Specifically not many dead Starlinks. There's been a handful but it's been pretty good from a warranty standpoint. They've been able to get replacements especially within that warranty period. Let's talk about SpaceX's money saving moments and one of those moments is removing an ethernet jack out of the modem which means this is a wi-fi only device if you want to connect ethernet devices like a mesh system or add it to a switch or a modem to get more connections in the home you will need to pay for a hundred dollar ethernet adapter and that means spending a bit more money, which is kind of annoying. They have reduced the amounts of things on this device to reduce the cost. Since version one, this is the V2 dish, it has improved in speed and reliability, connectivity, and of course, in the quality of the Wi-Fi within this modem, but they've had to cut some corners by removing things like ethernet ports. Furthermore, if you want a lengthier cable to connect the dish, you will need to, again, fork out some money. There are multiple sizes, as you can see, but it also means, again, the cost goes up. And if you want an RV version of a marine version, again, the costs go up. There's also a business grade version, which gets priority across speeds and up to 300 megabits a second in speed, which again, costs more. So at the end of the day, this is a really good solution for a very specific subset of people. I can highly recommend this solution. And if any friends or family do ask for something like this, I will only offer it to them if I understand their solution beforehand. If they say they live in a regional area, I'm just gonna go say, get Starlink. There is just, nothing better out there at the moment. They have a monopoly and I do hope some competition comes along so prices do go down per month. Device prices, they can stay the same as long as we get faster and better and I suppose more reliable connections through better hardware. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to NetVault for sending me this for review. Again, it's not their product, but they do have some really cool technologies such as a 4G failover for a Starlink system. Links below for where you can find those details. And if you want some accessories for Starlink, I have linked the amazon.com.au links for things like mounting this on roofs and so on. 